Today we continue our class Hilchas uh, Teshuvah, uh, and uh, looks like today we're going to finish the whole section of Hilchas Teshuvah Bez Hashem. So tomorrow is a big siyum in Yerushalayim. Is Rabbi Ruben Shlita, Rabbi Kachon Shlita, many great poskim, uh, many great rabbis on our generation. But uh, today we have a small siyum Bez Hashem. So <clears throat> let's start. So we start with uh, Sefer Chofetz Chaim. And uh, the big topic is the same, right? Uh, I'm going to remind what, what, is, what does it mean the same, meaning the seven conditions. Right? Toilet seven conditions, meaning toilet means for constructive purpose. So as we said many times before, you, you are allowed to talk Rechilus uh, uh, <clears throat> or Loshan Hara. Um, and it's not going to be considered Rechilus or Loshan Hara if it's for constructive purpose. Okay, so condition number three. We have seen that uh, with regard to Loshan Hara, one may not speak negatively about someone for a constructive purpose without first discussing the matter with a person. So if somebody offended somebody else, so just come to that person, try to discuss. Maybe he did not know that he offended somebody. Maybe he did not realize. Maybe he wants to apologize. But don't start uh, talking bad about him. <clears throat> An exception to this rule is the case where, it's, uh, where this speaking to the person could prevent the desired result from being achieved so what is the desired uh, result being achieved meaning that uh, may, may that, that this person may be threatening somebody else and if we forewarn him that we know his plans so it's going to he's going to design different plans and uh, carry out with, with that right that's which is a big issue of course <clears throat> continue with regard to the hills the exception may be more common than the rule. When an individual has already harmed someone or about to harm someone, one should not enter into discussion with him concerning the matter if this could make the more difficult for a victim to protect himself to attain, uh, or attain restitution. Right? So, I mean, we, we forewarned uh, him that we know uh, about the issue or, he, or he's known for the, to, to, to do these things. To other people in your neighborhood, in your in your town, so so just just because you, you you're going to tell him uh, tell him that you know what what he is about, it's not going to stop him. Right? Um, in another situation uh, of the uh, rehilus tochacha rebuke uh, toward the perpetrator is a prerequisite for a, a relating rehilus for a constructive purpose. So if if he's uh, not that uh, evil that person. So yeah, that's you are obligated to talk to him and uh, see maybe you can straighten out the, the case. It's not, uh, as I said a few times in the past, uh, somebody asked me to, to make a peace between people and try to, I, I came to that person and I asked him why did he do that and he had no idea. He was so embarrassed that he did such a thing to that to the other person. But in, in uh, when, when I was talking to the, uh, the the victim, so called victim part. So he like he he described that person as of e the evil of the evil. You understand? So so uh, it's proper to talk to people. Don't don't draw any conclusions. A discussion with a person uh, <coughs> with a person could preclude the need to speak to he was concerning him. Okay, and uh, dispel suspicion regarding the speaker's true intention. Okay, so we stop here. Right, so continue. So we're on the last chapter, right? And uh, just uh, <clears throat> just to remind us what this chapter is about. So it's uh, uh, in chapter nine, eight and nine. We were talking about uh, rewards and punishment, right? Uh, that per person is going to uh, receive uh, receive after his death. And even in this life, right, is if he is doing bad, he's going to suffer in this life. And in the next world, if he's doing good, he's going to be rewarded and enjoy this life and uh, the next life. Okay. And now we came uh, to the to the last chapter, and now Rambam is, uh, is talking to us. So he said, "Okay, now now you, you know that that reward is coming if you're doing good." Punishment is coming if you're doing bad. That's that's a given. That's let's put it uh, to, to the side for now. 
but you must do it out of love, of Hashem. Not because you are afraid that He's going to punish you, not because uh, you, you waited for reward. Even spiritual reward is also not uh, of pure love of Hashem, right? But the more you learn about Hashem, the more you fall in love with Him. Right? All the things that He does for you, like on a, on a second by second basis to your family, and all these beautiful things that He does to, to, to all the whole creation. Right? You fall in love and you do things because he said so, not because uh, you're afraid of uh, not to do, right? Although, although you should be afraid, when you're afraid you know uh, who you're dealing with, but the, the highest level is out of love. Okay, so let's see. <clears throat> so halacha number four, so chapter 10, halacha four. The sages of the previous generation declared, should one say, I will study Torah in order to be, uh, to, uh, that I become wealthy, uh, in order that I be called a rabbi, or uh, in order that I receive the reward in the world to come. The Torah teaches in Dvarim 11.13, if you are careful to observe my commandments, to love God, implying that all that you should do only be done out of love. The sages also said, in Psalm 112.1, uh, instructs, um, desire, uh, desire his commandments greatly. There is desire he commanded commandments and not the reward which comes from his commandments. But one more time, reward is coming, so don't worry about this part. Right? Um, in a similar manner, the great sages would command, uh, command the more understanding and brilliant among their students. Uh, just one second. Command the, the more, more understanding and brilliant among the students in private. As it says, do not be like a servant who serve the master for the sake of the receiving reward. So, but they would say it in private and we're going to see why. Rather, since he is the master, uh, it is fitting to serve him. There is serve him out of love. Okay, that's it. So let's try to understand uh, what it says here. I mean, uh, okay, a lot of commentary. Hopefully we're going to finish. If not, we're going to leave for the next time, but let's try, let's see. So it said the sages of the previous generations declared. Previous generations of commentaries say see free comments on the verse below Nedarim 962a. Okay. Declare. Should uh, one say, I will study Torah in order to become wealthy? Commentary. There is a major question among the Halachic authorities if a person is allowed to derive material benefits from studying Torah. Right? In Hilchas Talmud Torah 310. Rambam writes that it is forbidden to benefit from the Torah study in this world. Our sages commanded, do not make the Torah, uh, uh, words of the Torah a crown of glory for yourself, nor ask to cut with. See also commentary to Perkeolas 4.5. Okay, so let's try to understand. <clears throat> so so the, the verse says, do, do not uh, study Torah in order to become wealthy. So in order to get a position, in order to teach others, I mean, uh, if you if you have a good students and they pay you, it's uh, it's a good pay, I, I think, I know, right? It's a good, very good pay, <clears throat> or and then you get respect, okay? So and the Rambam said in Hil Hastal Torah, so a person is not allowed to charge for um, uh, for for teaching Torah. So why is he not allowed to charge? So so I will say just explain very simply. Uh, Moshe Rabbeinu received the Torah from Hashem for free, right? So and uh, and uh, Moshe taught it for free. So why why uh, you are Mr. Rabbi and now you want to charge us, right? You give us for free, like 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 somebody found something like it does not belong to him and now he wants to to like if and it belongs to community, let's say, right? And now he wants to get uh, rich out of it, right? Let's say. I don't know if it's a good example, but. Uh, you got the point. Okay, so, and the sages say uh, that uh, people have to live somehow. So, so we pay in rabbis, not, uh, not for the words of the Torah, but for compensation for them not doing anything else. So if he goes to, I don't know, to diamond uh, um, business, to, I don't know, to, I don't know, to oil business, this business, that, I mean, uh, there are many, many trades there in uh, real estate. They would be very talented in a car business, I don't know, well, well, many, many businesses. So in order for him just to stay with us and teach us Torah, because he also has to pay 
bills and he has a family and uh, uh, he has to eat kosher and all of these things. So we compensate for him not to do anything else. So it's not a payment for him to teach us Torah, but it's actually um, a compensation uh, for uh, not to do anything else. Okay, but Rambam said, don't do it. Because Rambam and may, many others, uh, they have professions, but it's not, uh, uh, today in, in today's world, it's not so simple. To have a profession and uh, be a rabbi. Not so, not so simple. No, 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 at least not to be a good rabbi. Okay, <clears throat> so continue. Nevertheless, Rav Yosef Karo, in his case of Mishnah, and in Shulchan Orach, Yorah Dea, chapter uh, 246, takes an issue with Rambam, on this point and explains that uh, not all of the sages were in, uh, have independent means of securing the livelihood. Were the Torah scholars to be prohibited from uh, earning income through his studies, he might be forced to abandon them and thus never realize his Torah potential. So which is uh, also mean, makes sense. So in, um, plus uh, there are not so many people like that. Who, who, who made Torah their profession, so it's not, uh, it's not such a big burden on the community. <laughs> okay. So, okay, so it was comment on uh, when, when when person said, let, let me get rich, wealthy. Okay. <clears throat> and what else we said, uh, so, so one, one, one more comment that we missed, they said, don't make a Torah, words of the Torah as your crown. So now people are going to bow to you and not making an axe to cut with. So axe meaning like a tool that uh, that you make money. Right? Okay. Um, okay. So, okay. So, so, um, should, should one say, I will study Torah in order to become wealthy, in order that I be called a rabbi, or in order that I receive a reward uh, in the world to come? Right, so okay, or he even he even say as as we mentioned before, it's not like nothing physical, just spiritual. So on one hand, spiritual, what could be best the, better than spiritual? Yeah, because still he has uh, ulterior motives, right? He wants to receive the reward in the world to come. The Torah teaches in Devarim eleven thirteen, if you are careful to absorb my commandments to love God, implying that all that you should uh, should only be that all that you should you do should only be done out of love right so it's commanding one of the we have one of the 613 commandments to love god Commentary. though the rambam had already stated this principle in early halachas uh, <clears throat> the radical nature of the concept requires him to bring the proofs uh, for, for the statements from the Talmud. okay so that's another proof that uh, person has the has to love God okay the sages also said in uh, Vedas 19b uh, Psalm, Psalm 112 1 instructs desire his commandments greatly meaning not uh, be like a person like ah uh, oh, again I have to pray I have to pr uh, I have to say Birchaz Hamazon like uh, it's uh, the most like a, a grateful person so if, if you know the person like that who is ungrateful to God, so it's only a matter of time, as uh, Rabbi Ruben Shlita always uh, teaches us, it's only a matter of time that he's going to be ungrateful to you. It's, it's coming your way. So if you know people like that, you have to stay away from them. <clears throat> right? At least uh, the, the, the issue is, so the, the, way, the way I see it, the issue is some, some people know they're doing, they're doing something wrong. Okay, they're trying to hide it. But if person that like show outside and he's uh, uh, and he's uh, like sp speaking out loud about it, that's that's a big issue. So he does not see it as a as a thing that he has to be ashamed of. Okay, that's uh, that's a problem. Okay, <clears throat> so okay, so our verse in Tehillim says, "Desire his commandments greatly." There is desire his commandments and not the reward uh, which comes from uh, his commandments. Okay, commentary. The Tosafos comments <clears throat> that this is only applies uh, when one regrets uh, over one's deeds if the reward does not come. So it's very interesting twist that uh, that uh, Tosafos adds. <clears throat> so uh, Rambam Mesun desire his commandments, 
but not uh, not the reward. I mean, the reward is coming, but it should not be your main focus uh, in doing mitzvahs and learning Torah. You understand? So, I mean, uh, it's like uh, I, I would say if if you you, you work for a, for a boss for a company, right? And you ask like today's Monday, and your paycheck is Friday, and then you ask, uh, I, 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 are, you, are you going to pay me? Are you going to pay me? Like uh, it's only you, you just came, buddy. It's Monday, uh, nine nine thirty in the morning. Why are you asking me? Just take it easy. Just do your work, and then on Friday you're going to get your check. Until now you were getting checks. I promise you, you're going to. So why why are you annoying, right? So that's that's what it says here. So let's see one more time the Tasafos. Tasafos comments that this only applies when one uh, has a regret over the one's good deeds. If the reward does not come, so he was doing because somebody told him it's gula, right? That's uh, uh, um, there are many, many foolish things that do uh, things only because it is gula, right? Okay, so they, they do things, and uh, and guess what? Many many times, whatever they did uh, is not going to work, um, uh, or like as uh, Rabbi Ruben Schlita, he I was I was listening to his uh, one of the past lectures. <clears throat> and he said that he was uh, he gave a blessing to a woman and uh, she came to, to one of the seminars uh, so and he said he he blessed her and said he said Hashem put the words words into my mouth and he and he said that that he told her that he she would not need the operation whatever operation doesn't matter it's irrelevant right? and now a few months later she came uh, again to, to another seminar and she said, uh, Rabbi, the, the thing happened, the miracle happened, and uh, the, the, the surgery was canceled. <clears throat> right? So he said, uh, so Baruch Hashem, his uh, blessing worked. But he said many times uh, great, uh, great people give the blessing and they not been fulfilled. Why? Because there is no receiving end. Right? The blessing is uh, genuine. It's a uh, it's very powerful blessing, but there is no... Let the other side is not ready for to receive it. It's not on the level to receive it. You understand? So the, this uh, this uh, blessing is being buried somewhere. Hopefully, it's going to get uh, get held in suspension. But if not, it's getting, going to get buried until this uh, person is uh, on the part to to receive this blessing. You understand? <clears throat> so so this case. Why why are we saying this? So in this case, as Tosafos explains, as, as, uh, this person was doing things because uh, he said, I, I'm going to get rich if I'm going to give 20% to tzedakah. Right? I'm going to get uh, shidduch if I do this and this. I'm going to do this if I do this and this. And guess what? He did it and, uh, and he was honest and diligent and guess what? It did not happen. So now what happened? He regretted. So that's, uh, that's the person we're talking about here. Those statements are based on Pesachim 8a, uh, which states a person who gives a pruta to charity in order that his son shall live, uh, uh, is totally, live is totally righteous. So it's very interesting thing. So if, uh, if Talmud said he's totally righteous, <clears throat> even though, as we said, he, he had the authority of motives, so he gives tzedakah in the refuah shlema of my son. Okay. Well, in full, full recovery of my son. Right? And... Uh, Despite him being like in open that he has also authoritative motives, right? In, right? So he's um, <clears throat> uh, he's called righteous. So today, when we when we want to do, to dedicate something, right, a class or you know, whatever we want to dedicate, so we, we say that it should be also in the schools and uh, in the merit of, or it it, it's, it should be also also not not simply. Do not do not give the all merit, but also share merit with for for shlema. Okay, <clears throat> so this person, so I would say, if he was given a tzedakah all alone, all alone, and then one time he gave tzedakah and dedicated to recover of his son, there is nothing wrong. But if he was stingy, he was not given. But now his son is uh, sick, very very sick, and she, his wife told him, if you don't give tzedakah now, I'm going to kill you, right? Because uh, our son is dying and because of your uh, stinginess. Okay, so he gave tzedakah. So it's not like uh, if he was doing it before and only this uh, tzedakah he dedicated his son, uh, to recover his son. But anyway, Talmud calls him righteous.
continue. However, the Rambam does not accept this principle. <laughs> though one's deeds are totally righteous, though the deeds are totally righteous, even they are fulfilled because of a selfish motivation, a person uh, should try to rise above the level of sorrow and seek to serve God for his own sake. Okay? So Rambam said, and the, the whole uh, Cha the, the, the whole uh, remaining um, <clears throat> halachas in this chapter is go uh, going to, do, to be dedicated to this uh, last thing. Even though his deeds are righteous, righteous meaning he gave tzedakah. Doesn't matter what, what, why he did uh, gave tzedakah, but the end result that uh, poor people uh, uh, didn't have uh, something to eat and now they have uh, food. Uh, organization could not perform like, uh, like, like this seum that is going to take place tomorrow in Yerushalayim. Uh, I'm not sure. Shlita, and I'm not sure how much money. I think it's a lot of money. If you ever been to great synagogue in Jerusalem, that's a huge place, very expensive, and all of this food, all of the guests, and unbelievable, right? So and uh, and all of the people who donate to Bizrat Hashem. So that's uh, that's their schools also. Okay. So 25. Continue. In similar manner. So so Rambam say. Uh, even though he, he's totally righteous, but try to do it out of love, right? For just Hashem, Hashem said, give to to poor people, give to charity, give to this cause, to that cause, give to people who uh, who study in uh, in Kolo. Okay, so I'm I'm doing because Hashem said so, and in the meantime, I will also like uh, get, get in this reward of tzedakah. Continue. Uh, in, in a similar manner, the great sages would command the more understanding and brilliant among the students in private. So it's very interesting. So this is the, the next verse we discussed before. Um, I don't remember when, like a month ago maybe. Um, <clears throat> and now we can we came back to it. So they, these uh, uh, sages, will discuss only the uh, brilliant, uh, brilliant among the students. So the... <laughs> Most of the people were very, very smart, but those are brilliant, okay? They, um, they receive these teachings only uh, for the more capable of the students. Less students err and think there is no reward to, uh, for the practice uh, Torah and Mitzvahs. As mentioned above, the Antigonus of Soho um, <clears throat> taught this cancer to his students. I think that Antigonus of Soha, if I remember correctly, he was rabbi of the rabbi Akiva. Rabbi of, of the rabbi Akiva. Right. If I remember correct, correctly. Okay. So, so he, so this great sage, so he called, uh, he, he taught this um, principle to, to the students. Two and two of his disciples, Tzadok and Beitus, drew a misconception that God would not grant any reward for the Torah practice and stand uh, and start the breakaway sect that diverted many from the Torah absorbance. So wh what, what did he say? Well, like, uh, it's, it's an upper Kiyovas, believe it or not. <clears throat> so it says, uh, do not be like a servant who served his master for the sake of receiving reward. Right? So meaning what? And uh, receive. Uh, so, yeah, so that, that, that's the whole line in per Kiyovas. Uh, so normal understanding, like uh, if, if you read the commentary, exactly as Rambam, Rambam explained why. Uh, well, why, why you have to serve, uh, how you said you have to serve to Hashem as a master out of love. So he is a great master. He gives you all of the um, amazing things. So love him. Right? But they, these Beitus and um, Tzadok, right? Uh, so they, 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 they created this uh, breakaway sect. Um, what is it? Uh, Bitusim and. Uh, Tzadikim, okay, I forgot, whatever. So, so, and, uh, so, and, so they, they heard this teaching and they said, oh, if, if don't serve you, your master for the reward, guess what? You know what it means? There is no reward. So why should we serve? So we're going to live the, any way we want and enjoy our life and uh, forget about Judaism. So they, they try to recreate uh, Judaism, like, um, like all this uh, reform and other uh, garbage out there. And, um, 
And uh, I mean, it did not work very well for them, but uh, but they were in some point they were very strong. They were able to sway many people of the Orthodox Judaism, unfortunately. Tzedukim, sorry, well, that that's the name. Tzedukim and Bitusim. Okay. So and of course, but on another hand, as we said before, like how is it possible? He, they are like uh, top students of this. Uh, Great rabbi of Rabbi Rabbi Ki, right? Uh, Antigonus of Soch, and they concluded this uh, thing. So well, one of the explanations is they wanted to to make an error, and uh, that's what they did. One explanation. Another explanation that uh, they did not want to ask rabbi. So sometimes when uh, even maybe rabbi misspoke, maybe they, maybe he did not elaborate enough. Maybe he was thinking about something else while teaching this halacha. It's also possible. So he did not give all of the details. So ask the question, right? As as the question, clarify before before changing your life so drastically. Make sure that you understand uh, the, the the topic. Don't uh, just break away and uh, do another set. That's the problem. So and uh, so uh, now the sages, as the Rambam is saying, so they taught this concept in private. So why in private commentary? <clears throat> so uh, only top students and only in private. So it looks like we all need to know. Like, and uh, Rambam uh, is not teaching anybody in private. He teaching uh, everybody in pri in public. And he said this book, uh, Mishnah Torah, for great people and small people alike. So it's not like uh, only for scholars. No, it's for all of the people. Okay, commentary. And not in public, unless the teaching is spread among the common people and misconception arises, right? So, mis misconception, so many people, what, what, what is the problem? Why, why we don't like these common people so much? Maybe they, they nice. So they nice, but if they do not learn, they are wicked, basically, right? So why they're wicked? Because they do everything opposite of the Torah, what, what the Torah commands. How do we know? Because they never learn it, right? So if you, if you, if you tell them one verse, they would take it out of the context and that's it. The Rambam statements arise a question. If the teaching was to be reserved only for more capable and understanding students of the Torah, and even to, uh, and even to them only can convey it in private, private not uh, meaning not uh, like in the, not that Rabbi would assemble the best uh, top five students and tell them, right? Only in private. Why did Rambam include this in Mishnah Torah? Right? As, as we said, it's, it's a famous question. So Rambam said that uh, he teaches only basic halacha, right? In his introduction to the text, the Rambam writes uh, the, that the Mishnah Torah was intended for a great and small uh, and small alike. After one studying the written Torah, uh, he, uh, he can read this text and no uh, oral Torah without reading another text in between. So this is uh, this is statement. It's uh, if you understand what we just said, it's very very powerful, and um, only a person uh, like Karambam can make such a statement. And we know that he was very humble, right? Uh, today, if, uh, only arrogant people would uh, say like that. But uh, we know if he was humble and he put his life on the line, right? And he worked on this uh, on this and other books, and he said that uh, basically. You, you you study the written Torah, meaning 24 books of Torah, <clears throat> Torah, Prophets and Writings, right? All the three sections. And then you, you don't need the Talmud, you don't need anything, right? Uh, any other Hilta, right? Uh, any other things. Just go directly, he said, to my book, Mishnah Torah, and you, 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 you all said. Of course, we're going to learn that, uh, of course, it's proper to go to the Talmud, and uh, see how sages derive this class. That's of course. But he said to to survive as a Jew, you must know my book, not uh, not all other books. So he said, these books technically were, were, all, the, is all that that you need. So which is very strong statement, as I understand. How can uh, how can he include in such a text the teaching uh, which should be com communicated uh, only with reservation? So that's that's the question, right? <clears throat> However, by explaining the reward for the sermon of the Torah and mitzvahs in chapter eight and nine, the Rambam precluded the possibility of such misconception arising. He emphasized that the reward will be given to the uh, for our for our Torah practice. 
right? With, the, uh, with this halachas, he emphasizes the goal for which uh, we should aspire, meaning the source uh, motivated by love without any desire for recompense. So recompense is coming one more time. But uh, it's very interesting uh, sentence before said, he emphasized the reward will be given for our Torah practice. So if somebody is, uh, want, want any reward, and we should, uh, 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 we should want, want, want the reward, because it, as uh, Rambam described, it's very, very beautiful. Reward in Alam Abba. Right, but uh, but it should be it's going to be given to us whoever is only for a Torah practice, whoever right. learn Torah and practice Torah. So all other people uh, who work a lot and uh, I'm uh, I'm trying to to convince a person. I mean, he works so much, so and a very 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 nice individual, but uh, um, he drives I think like almost three hours one way. And sometimes he just stay in the job because uh, it, he has no 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 strength uh, to return. You understand? And he works uh, I don't know how many days. So maybe five days, maybe 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 even six. Maybe he works on Sunday. I think or whatever. That's that's crazy, right? So and, uh, so we try to convince him not to work so much. You know, try to find the job closer to his house. Uh, because right, because the, the reward is going to be given only for a mitzvah. So all these efforts driving three hours or almost three hours one way, there's no reward. It's like a uh, waste. <clears throat> okay. So one more time, the whole sentence. In similar manner, the great sages would command uh, the more understanding and brilliant among the students in private. So we just commented. Do not be like servants who serve uh, their master for the sake of, of receiving the reward. Commentary. In his commentary to Mishnah Avas 1.3, Rambam differentiated uh, between a gift given with obligation for the donor and a reward payment for employer to the worker. Gift given without obligation. Okay, okay. Okay, so, so there are two. Okay. Okay. So the two kinds of rewards. So one is the reward is a bonus. So I mean that you're not obligated to pay bonus like uh, in some in some company. Um, for example, when uh, when uh, when uh, when they hire me, so they say, and we pay in our company the bonus uh, from five to I don't know he said like 25 to 30 percent which is a lot to percent so it is a bonus but the, are they obligated of course every year they come came up with a different excuse market is down market is this market is that customers are leaving customers are coming new new customers we have to give them uh, the low contract but then we're going to raise their fees in five years and ten years so basically basically you're never going to see the bonus you understand? So even though they, they say they're going to pay us, but uh, I mean, maybe they, they pay to top people, but uh, uh, to simple people, they almost never pay or just a little. All right. So that's uh, that's uh, one reward. Right. And the second reward is uh, something that um, payment uh, for for our job. So those are two, two separate rewards. OK, continue. Rather, uh, since he is a master, it is fitting to serve him, right? So don't work for reward, uh, but uh, because he's a master. There is serve him out of love. Okay, so that's uh, the message, number 29. In a contrast to the previous sentence, uh, which is quoted from uh, Perky Ovas, one tree, this is Rambam's own. Okay, no problem, I mean, we trust Rambam. So continue. So basically, it says out of love. So I, 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 I met many people in my life who said that they love Hashem, and when you start asking them the questions, they do all of all of the like every every hour, every minute of their life, they go against Hashem. So in order to love Hashem, you have to acquire a lot of knowledge. So meaning what exactly He expects of us, and what it, what uh, what He said, uh, He personally said that I love it. Or uh, some things, that, or he personally said, "I hate it," right? So that uh, was uh, given to us through the through the, our prophets. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so continue. Anyone who uh, halacha number five. 
Anyone who occupies himself with Torah in order to receive reward, in order to protect himself from retribution, is considered as one is not occupied for the sake of God. In a contrast, anyone who occupies himself um, with it, not, not because of fear, not, uh, not to receive reward, but rather because uh, his uh, love for Lord of the entire earth, uh, who commanded it, it um, have commanded it is is the one who occupied himself for the for the God's sake. Nevertheless, the sages declared, a person should um, should always occupy himself with the Torah, even when uh, it is not for the sake of God. Okay, for out of the sorrows which is not intended for the sake uh, for the God's sake, will come the sorrows that intended for the God's sake. Therefore, when one teaches children, women, and most of the common people, one should teach them to serve out of fear, uh, and in order to receive reward. As, uh, as their knowledge grows, and their wisdom increases, this secret should be revealed to them slowly, bit by bit. They should become accustomed to this concept uh, gradually, until they grasp uh, it uh, and know it, and, uh, be, um, and being servant got out of love. So this is an amazing, amazing, amazing halacha. <clears throat> any, any questions uh, on what we said on previous halacha before we start? <clears throat> okay, then we continue. <clears throat> so from the beginning of this commentary and explanations. Anyone who occupies himself with the Torah in order to receive reward or in order to protect himself from retributions, retributions is considered as the one who is not uh, uh, occupied for the sake of God. Retributions commentary. As mentioned above, the occupation with Torah will bring about benefit in this world and the world to come to and protect uh, from harm. So we, we said that that's a guarantee. So Hashem uh, is. Uh, Protecting those who are close to them. That's obvious. That's what uh, even we're going to do that <clears throat> so if um, uh, If I have a choice to protect my brother or my children or protect uh, somebody that I do not know So I mean it's obvious who I'm going to protect. It's like uh, or somebody who is loyal to me Right who did me a favor who did uh, what I asked him not not somebody who goes to me on a daily basis I mean, uh, that's uh, that's uh, just given, right? So Hashem protects somebody who is uh, learning Torah. So a person, even for this protection, so even uh, if he learns Torah only for this protection, uh, from from retribution, protects from retribution. So it's not considered the one who occupies himself for the sake of God. Twenty one, for his intent is his own personal benefit. So all of the things, it's like a barter. You, you do this for me, and uh, I know I'm going to do this for you, and Hashem, you're going to do this for me. You're going to protect me. So protection is a, is a, is a, is a, some, uh, some, it's a good benefit, right? I mean, uh, uh, you, you, you get something in, in return, which is good. I think it's good. <laughs> so continue. In a, but it's still, it's not for the sake of God, right? Even though it, all, all of these things are spiritual, and, and you cannot uh, calculate like uh, 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 translate it into pounds or dollars or I don't know like uh, uh, how, how much you gain from the Torah study, how much protection you got five pounds uh, pounds of protection, you got protection for seven enemies but not from uh, enemy nine by eight like um, right? so it's, it's all spiritual but still it's not for God's sake in a contrast anyone who occupies himself with it not because of fear not because of, uh, not be, uh, not to receive reward, but rather because of his love of the Lord of the entire earth who commanded it. So Hashem told us to, to learn Torah, do mitzvahs, and it, and He said clearly it's going to be good for you. So it's like uh, a, li a little child. Uh, he, he said, uh, is, is it good? I mean, of course it's good. Look, you you're my daughter. I mean, of course, or you you're my son. You're my little son. I, I'm going to. Offer you, I'm your father. I'm going to offer you something bad, you normal. But of course, if I'm then uh, giving to you, I say this is good for you. Of course, it's beneficial. Well, like you normal, right? Then uh, what is the commentary? Um, 
because of the, um, just one second, I lost it. But, but rather because of the love of, for the Lord, of the entire earth, uh, who commanded it. So what is it? The Torah st uh, and the practice. So Torah and mitzvah. So that he commanded us only two things, Torah and mitzvah. And one, um, and one who occupied himself for the God's sake. Okay, so coming to the Torah 3. Ta'anis 7a declares, Whenever a person studies Torah for the God's sake, the Torah becomes drug of life for him. <laughs> so if he, if he studies or she studies for Torah for its own sake, so a person enjoys it, right? And he cannot live without it. So some people, like uh, the Czech Times, so Rabbi I Ami, mean, uh, that's a uh, rabbi, like, like this. So I mean, he speaks exactly for 10 minutes. And people check time, I don't know, seven times. Seven times in this, uh, I don't know, everybody. Like, he, he's so annoying. And it's, it's not, and, and I listen to that, it's not like he's so annoying. Okay, maybe he's not the, that uh, that interesting, but uh, but you can see that Torah did not become uh, uh, the drug of their life, of this week, for sure not. They don't enjoy it. Okay. Continue. Nevertheless, our sages, uh, so commentary where is our sages in a number of places among them Pesachim 50b Sota 22b Sanhedrin 105a okay nevertheless our sages declared a person should always occupy himself with the Torah even when it's not for the sake of uh, God's sake right so for out of the service uh, which is in, not intended for the God's sake will come the service that intended for the God's sake so we always say don't don't aim like to the, to the highest level and uh, that's uh, that's advice from Yetzirah. So they say yeah I heard uh, in a lecture the rabbi said that you have to serve Hashem out of love. So until I get to this love point I'm not going to serve it. But why? Because I'm not on that level yet. I, I want to complete reward. I want to be sincere. So I would say you say just take it easy. It's not sure. Why? Because they already declared you start doing for whatever reason, whatever you motivated by candy, by cakes, little children, or uh, by this reward, that reward for uh, to, for the protection from this retribution, that retribution. You want to become wealthy, you want to get married, you want the children, good children. You start doing this, and uh, if you're doing it sincerely, right? At least like you're trying to understand what Torah is teaching. So Torah has this effect that it goes into your blood, into your veins, and uh, in, and through the blood it goes, of course, through through your brain, and it, and it gives you, it cleanses you, and when it cleanses you, so from this authority of motives, whatever is it, many of them are spiritual, purely spiritual, whatever or physical, that doesn't doesn't matter, right? So Torah has this uh, uh, power to change, to transfer our understanding and, it, and we're going to study uh, out of love. So start studying for whatever whatever reason you, you're going to study, but uh, try to to study out of love, but uh, Torah it can help you very much. Okay. <clears throat> okay, 25, commentary. Russian Bracha 17a, 17a and Tasafos Tani 7a Note that the Talmud um, is extremely critical of those who do not occupy themselves with the Torah for the God's sake. <laughs> Tani 7f declares that whenever a person does not study Torah for the God's sake, the Torah becomes deadly portion to, for him. So it's not like uh, maybe he's not good, maybe he has to <laughs> advance in the level. So in this Talmud 17a, it says deadly portion to him, meaning it's like a, he's studying Torah and drinking poison. So, wow, right? We said that is a source of life. So how come? So, uh, Bracha 17a states that it would have been better for a person who does not study for the God's sake not to have been born. So it's even harsher. In this uh, case, he's going to drink poison, right? It should drink, it's like a tourist poison, but uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the expression of Bracha said uh, it's better for him than never been born. So what's going on here? Right, we, we just said, uh, okay, uh, it's a little contradiction. We just say, study for whatever authoritative motives, and I'm going to bring it to the, uh, for the study of, of uh, out of this, uh, for the sake of God and um, out of love. So, looks like contradiction. 
in um, in the resolution, of course, there is a resolution. Right? In the resolution, uh, the commentaries explain that there are two levels of occupying uh, occupying oneself with Torah that is not for the sake of God, not for the sake of God. Number one, or A, uh, gain wealth, honor, uh, or other benefits uh, as implied by Rambam here. Okay, so he, he wants to get uh, wealth, right? maybe work as a rabbi or... Uh, I don't know, the, the, be a part of base din, uh, well, they're different things, right? Uh, be, to have a cashless agency, and do cash supervision, many, many th things, uh, do do funerals, do uh, weddings, there are many things uh, how to, uh, a rabbi can make money, okay, in, in kosher way, right? So, uh, one, one to, to gain wealth, right, honor, so of course, honor and other benefits as applied by Rambam here. Okay, so that's one one of the reason of studying Torah not for the for its own sake. And B, so B is a that's a, that's a very bad. B in order to wax a colic. So what does it mean to wax a colic? So meaning that uh, to to show off that that he's smarter. So Rabbi is talking about weekly parsha. And here is kind of, uh, Rabbi, why in this uh, case uh, it says this and this? So Rabbi has a Humush is Rashi, he also, and Rashi is quiet, or he, he just uh, often uh, offers a simple explanation. And he said, Rabbi, well, how come you don't know? Really, you, you don't know? Oh, it's so simple. You wanted to explain? And he started explaining, everybody turned their head on this manga. Whoa, so basically he learned this, this one Hidush in his life, Right, uh, just to to to, to make fun of uh, this rabbi or, or his colleague. So that's that's uh, that's in this case, as the commentary explained, that uh, this um, Torah becomes a de de deadly portion of him, and it's better for him not to be born if he's going to study Torah only to to make somebody like um, to insult somebody. Okay, continue. Pesachim suggests that uh, one occupy himself with Torah. Uh, even if it's not explicitly um, intended for the God's sake, if one mat uh, motivate, uh, if one's motives are in the first category previously mentioned, right? So in the first category of previously mentioned, meaning to get wealth and honor and other benefits, so he, uh, Pesachim, uh, Talmud Pesachim said, continue study, continue, and Bezras Hashem, so Torah can help you. But in the second case, that's it. It's better for him not to do the Yadon. So he does not care about the Torah. He does not care about Kiddushim. He's, he cares only so the Iskalik would not know the answer. And I would. That's the issue. However, if, one's, uh, if one motives are the latter, then the sage's harsh words uh, uh, of criticism apply. Meaning that if he wants only to, to make fun of his Iskalik. 25. Um, so let me read the whole uh, the whole sentence again. So nevertheless, our sages declare the person should always uh, occupy himself with Torah, even uh, when it is not for the uh, God's sake. Okay, we just commented. Continue. Uh, for out of the service which is not intended for the God's sake will come the service uh, that intended for the God's uh, sake. Okay. So commentary on this. Uh, in the introduction of e Eicharaba, uh, to, uh, to, um, Eicharaba 2, quotes uh, God as saying, uh, Would Israel abandon me and keep my Torah? For, the, for its light would be ultimately return them to good. To the good. So Hashem is saying, so Eicha, that, that's what we're going to, to read on uh, Tisha B'Av, right? So, so he said, if if only Israel left, okay, they don't want to learn my, they don't want to do the mitzvahs, okay, okay, let them abandon me, but let them not abandon, abandon my, my Torah, meaning let them continue learning, even not, not for the sake of the Torah, continue, continue learning, continue, right, it's going to bring you to the, to the good things, okay. If a Jew frequently occupies himself with Torah, the inner goodly nature of the Torah, will eventually have the, an effect upon him and motivate him to serve God with a proper intention. 
So is it going to happen every time? No. Some people are so corrupted, so they never, uh, I don't want to say never, but uh, more, most likely they're not going to do Tishu. But some people who are not so corrupted, they honest that they with themselves and they acknowledge their uh, deficiencies and say, okay, I have this issue. I am aware of this sin. I'm working on it. Uh, it takes time, but uh, I, at least I'm not fooling myself. Right? So these people have a chance. There is a deeper aspect uh, to this statement. Um, so it says, it translates as an inner part. Every element of the Jewish life is motivated by the godly potential. Okay. Though uh, he may think he is uh, performing a mitzvah for the selfish intent, the inner core <laughs> uh, of the service, uh, right? That is, uh, that, um, so even, even though, like, um, a person in mind, right? Or like in mind, he 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 saw in the Hashem that he wants some benefit, but inner the godly core uh, wants o only the connection with God, right? So it's not entirely. So what what, what this commentator say? It's always mixed of good and, uh, and bad. Continue. Therefore, when one teaches children, women, and most common people. One should uh, teach them to serve, to serve, uh, to serve, to serve out of fear and in order to receive reward. Okay, so of course today uh, women are more educated. But talking about olden days when women did not go to schools, I mean, I think uh, the women start going to yeshivas uh, maybe hundred years ago. Some. That, that's when it started, maybe a little more than a hundred years, but but no, not not more than that. So before so before that, the women were educated only in the house, right? From their mother, from father, from the brothers. So brothers would come from yeshiva, they would uh, learn Torah, and uh, the girls would listen, and that's how they would uh, would get their knowledge, right? So from for simple people, for common people. Many common people they could not even read. No, I'm not sure how many, but uh, some some people, common people, uh, could not read. That's for sure. Okay. So for them, for simple people, not the, the with uh, not so developed intellect, and the children, uh, so the, you you teach reward and punishment only, right? So they, because they have to do it anyway. They have they must do it just because they understand it. Do not understand. It's like it's irrelevant. The bottom line, uh, Hashem said, did he do it or not? That's, uh, that's the question they're going to ask. Okay. So continue. Uh, I mean, uh, commentary. Uh, in the Rambam's commentary to the Mishnah, in the, to, in the introduction to the 10th chapter of Sanhedrin, he elaborates on this concept. When a young child is brought to the teacher to be taught uh, the Torah, this is the greatest good for him, allowing him to attain fulfillment. However, because of his young and undeveloped uh, intellect, the child does not comprehend uh, this good. Therefore, it is necessary for the teacher to motivate him uh, to his studies with things he love, loves. Okay. So, I mean, uh, it's ultimate good that uh, this uh, amazing smart par parents brought this child to the teacher uh, and he said it's good, good. I mean, the, the child would prefer to play outside, uh, right? Uh, not, not to sit and, uh, and read the books and try to memorize things, right? So, but it's uh, for his ultimate good, right? So, uh, uh, this teacher has to reward him. He should tell him, I will give you nuts, figs, and a little honey. It is out of this motivation that the child begins to study. The child studies not because of the uh, uh, essence of the study, uh, for the child has no, no comprehension of that, but because of the food. Not because of the food, that's, that's what he wants, a little reward. Eating these del delicacies are more important to him than the actual study. So, I mean, we, we, we have understand what's going on. He just likes the candy, right? But why? In order to get the candy, the reward, he, he was willing to study. When he becomes older and his intellect grows to the point uh, he realizes the worthlessness of these items, uh, we should encourage him and motivate him to learn by prom pr promise of things uh, that he holds dear. His teacher should tell him, study and I will buy you nice shoes or beautiful garments. 
Thus, he would study, not for the sake of the study itself, but uh, for the garments, uh, the, um, the, uh, the garment becomes more valuable for him than the Torah. The Rambam continues mentioning other factors that may be employed in motivating uh, older children, for example, money or honor. He concludes, all this is degrading. Okay, so, so we have not denied, we understand, it's all degrading. Nevertheless, it may be necessary to become uh, uh, necessary because of the limits of the person's intellect to make the goal of the wisdom something that other than wisdom. Right? So goal is for this child to get uh, the knowledge, but uh, we, we do it in a roundabout way because of the reward of the candies or garments. Sorry, seven. Continue. As there, so okay, so this ca three category of people. Uh, so which is what uh, teach uh, uh, children, women, and common people. As their knowledge grows and their wisdom increases. This city should be revealed to them, uh, to them slowly, bit by bit. So as as we said, uh, I, and I saw it, and uh, it's when when uh, when, when pe people start teaching uh, uh, this Soren uh, Hashem out of love, it's the biggest disaster that could happen to a person. So he said, when I'm going to be on that level, I'm going to uh, to serve Hashem. But but I'm I'm not a hypocrite, Rabbi. I'm not going to do if I don't feel it. If it's not in my heart, I'm not going to do it. So that's disaster. They should become accustomed, accustomed to this concept gradually, meaning sort of uh, Hashem out of love, until they grasp it and know uh, it and be in a certain, uh, certain God out of love. 48. Uh, a teacher uh, <laughs> must have patience and mold the student's character slowly. So especially with the small children, it's uh, to be a teacher of the small children, you have to like... Uh, see uh, the potential, you, you have to see the personality and minds deeper on you know, a deeper level than, than you see from outside. So on outside they can behave this way or that way, but it's not uh, who they are. So in order to be a teacher, it's not so simple, right? So and they have to mold the, uh, the character slowly, taking care not to expose that to the concept that are too difficult for them to comprehend. And internalize. So not all, all of the students on the same level. Just because they boys or girls uh, of the same age does not mean they are on the same level of comprehension. So don't overdo it. Nevertheless, he must uh, place. Uh, uh, he, he must place uh, as, as his intent. His students' uh, uh, eventual appreciation of this fundamental truth and gradually direct uh, them to this appreciation. So, on one hand, they're not ready at this point, but it must be your goal. So, in one, uh, on one, at one point, you would have to reveal them. What is the goal of uh, everything that we do? Okay. Any questions on what we said? Continue. Yes, how about Brad? Yes, go ahead. Yes. Yes. Uh, everything that you've said up to this point, now, does this all apply just to the Jewish nation or does any of it apply to gentiles uh what what what, what i mean uh, this all the halachas for jews so certain out of love uh if if that's i mean that, that that's the main concept of what we're discussing here it's uh or reward the punishment it applies for jews and gentiles so gentiles i mean that they, they just have to do different mitzvahs but still, there is a reward and punishment. You understand? So there is um, the, he has no difference. And they also, Hashem does uh, all of these miracles, all the beautiful things for Jews and Gentiles. So they have to uh, do, serve whatever they do out of love. And uh, Rambam said that, uh, he said the most, that the dumbest person that uh, can, can ever be in this world is, uh, is a Gentile. Who observed the seven laws of Noah, but he said, uh, "I am doing that because I think that that's uh, that's the right thing to do." So why? And Ramam said that's he, the most dumbest person because even if he would say, "I'm doing it because Hashem said so," he's getting amazing reward.
But if he said, because of my intellect, because it's good for society, because I feel good, because my mother taught me, my father taught me, it's very good, but he has no reward. So all his life, he, he did right things, right things, and no reward. That's, uh, I'm not calling him, call him the dumbest person ever. You understand? Did, did we answer the question, or like you have different examples so I can answer? Yes, yes, no, that's perfect. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome. So let's do one more. One more halacha. So it says, uh, I think it's the last one. Yeah, that's the last halacha. So it is well known and clear matter that uh, we love, um, the love of God will not become attached within a person's heart until he becomes obsessed with it at all times, as fitting, living all things uh, in, the, uh, in the world except for this. This was implied by the commandments in Dvarim 6.5, Love God, your Lord, with all your heart, with all your soul. One can only love God as the outgrowth of his knowledge, exactly as we said, right? So if you have no knowledge, you don't even know who you love, right? Um, outgrowth of the knowledge with which he knows him. The nature of one's love depends on the nature of one's knowledge. A greater, um, a small amount of knowledge arouses a lesser love. A greater amount of knowledge arouses a greater love. So the more person knows Hashem, the more he loves him. I mean, that, at least the, the way it's supposed to be. Uh, therefore, it is necessary for a person to seclude himself in order to understand uh, and, um, and conceive wisdom and, um, and concept which make his creator known right, to him according to the potential which man possesses uh, to understand and comprehend. As we explained in Hilchas Yisudei Hatara. Okay, so that's uh, the Kol Halacha. So let's do from the beginning with commentaries. And it says, um, It is well known and clear matter that the love of God will not become attached within a person's heart until he becomes obsessed with it at all times, as fitting, right? Uh, living all things of the world except for this one. So if he, if person is... Uh, in he, to his job, into his hobby, I'm not sure when, when people have a, a time for a hobby, but let's say, uh, into sports, into watching news, whatever, all these things. So for sure, he's never going to atti be attached to Hashem, right? Because he has all, all of the other the, the distractions, right? And, um, and they take time, simple. Or he has friends, people like go to hang out with friends, with family. <laughs> so when they have time, have no idea but uh, what I I what I do know that the the person is going to be punished for all the time wasted okay so you, you saw your cousin okay you say hi you, you could have called him right uh, do vo vo voice me messages that's what I do somebody say okay can we talk with you no we do voice messages right then the voice messages is much shorter you have two minutes and three minutes and that's it you answer and uh, don't, don't need to, to see each other Okay, so it's commentary. Uh, a person may fear God and also fear, fear physical things. However, this relationship is not possible regarding, uh, regarding love. Okay, right? So fear God and physical things possible. Uh, but loving God is not possible. Let's see what he means. Um, to the extent that he feels attached, desire and love for material things. He will be unable to feel this emotion toward God. So people who are uh, in love with material things, they cannot have this, uh, this um, relationship with God. Closeness. So because a person always have all of these things in mind, have to make more money and have to buy this house and that house, right? this pool, that pool, that's the issue. Right? So he, the way I said, like it's simple words, right? The person simply does not have time to dedicate to the Torah study and uh, to, as, uh, as we're going to say in the uh, end of this uh, halacha, to seclude himself, like sit uh, in a dark room. 
uh, for half an hour, one hour, like uh, 15 minutes, right, to think about uh, his life. Nevertheless, um, the, the above should not be inter interpreted to imply that necessity to accept ascetic, <laughs> uh, hermit-like lifestyle. On the contrary, in Hilka's Dios, one to hear Rambam severely criticizes those one second, who adopt such a path. Rather, Rambam advises us to appreciate God in every element of existence and uh, perceive our involvement with material things as extension of our service of God. So let's uh, try to explain. So uh, Rambam, as, as we, we learn in the Kilkos Dios, so Rambam says, I, I, I don't need this ascetic life. So the person goes to the mountain, leave uh, the ground or whatever, uh, stay in this cavern, uh, build his house there, do not see the people. No, that, that's not holiness. In Judaism, it's called stupidity, right? It has nothing to do with holiness, right? Uh, and Torah does not expect us. And Hashem said, I, I created all of the beautiful foods for you in the world so you you obligated to try that uh, all all of the beautiful foods all of the beautiful fruits exotic fruits i don't know like vegetables that i created so it's it's all for you right so as uh, also you say every jew is supposed to uh, understand that the whole world was created for him for him person and that's why uh, that's how he has to see the world right it was created for me on one hand on the other hand i have an ob obligation for the whole world Right for existence of the whole world, right? It's not for free, right? Uh, and uh, okay, so um, all right, so we have to enjoy it, our life, but it should not be like uh, the main focus of our existence, right? So you eat, you sleep, you have family, children, everything, and uh, so in Hashem. But it's all all these things should be extension of the source of God. That's what. What, what 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 this come come commentator is saying meaning what that i go to work not because to make money i go to work because i have to feed my family so i give to daka so to feed my family i uh, that's what i sign uh, that's a torah law uh, that i signed in my ksuba to my wife i'm going to provide for her for our kids okay I do, i'm doing the mitzvah but don't overdo the mitzvah or i have to be with my wife together on uh, days that is allowed okay i'm doing the mitzvah not because of course i can enjoy there is no problem to enjoy and you must enjoy it right but my my main intention must be to to serve hashem i'm going to sleep why because i'm too tired so to I, I cannot learn any longer so i cannot perform so i'm going to get rest get energy and uh, i'm going to study better i'm going to do mitzvahs better okay that's why i'm going to sleep same with eat and eating and all other things This is uh, this was implied. Continue. This was implied by the commandment in Varim six five: Love God your Lord with all your heart, with all your soul. That's our uh, Shema. Okay. Continue. One can only love God as an outgrowth of the knowledge with which he knows Him. So people, as as, we, as I said before, many people who claim that they love God know exactly zero about Him. And they do everything possible opposite what he said. So, commentary. The Maggit of Mezrich asks, How the, can the Torah command, love God, your Lord? How is it possible to command the emotion? Either you feel love, or, 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 or either one feels love, or doesn't. There is no way for a person to be ordered the um, ex experience of feelings. He explains. The commandment to love God follows the verse Shema, which proclaims that uh, God, your Lord, is one. Okay. Uh, when a person uh, thoroughly comprehends this concept, he will naturally be aroused to love God. So the more you learn, the more you learn, as, uh, as Rabbi Ruben Shlita always explained, the more you learn what, uh, um, if you learn um, um, Hazanish Imonai Bitochon series, right? So the first few lectures, so Hazanish explain us, it's a uh, Rabbi Ruben, right? So he explained us all uh, like a uh, nervous system, all of the blood vessels, all the, how the speech work, this work, like, uh, and the person might be saying, look, I'm not in biology class, I'm not a uh, science class, uh, this great uh, Hazanish, uh, t tell me something about Torah, why are you telling me about anatomy, how it's all work, I'm not a doctor. And uh, the, the point is that Hazanish said, so until you know all of these things, you do not appreciate 
I like uh, the, the miracle that you can go to the bathroom. You have no idea. Because if this st stuff stays inside of you, it's going to poison your body and you're going to die very soon. Right? Or, uh, right? So, and other things. Right? So, and the more you learn about your stomach, how like blood vessels, the, the, it works, you fall in love, you fall in love with Hashem that uh, He performs all of these miracles. Okay, continue. The nature of one's love depends on the nature of one's knowledge, right? Uh, a small amount of knowledge arouses a lesser life because, uh, because uh, pe people think that uh, it uh, or, or works on, on its own. The greater amount of knowledge arouses greater love. Commentary. Uh, though each Jew possesses natural potential to love God, the expression of potential depends on the development of the intellectual awareness of Him, meaning Hashem. If person will not direct his thoughts to God, he will have done nothing to lead and develop that feeling. So love, uh, and I, I would add, uh, like uh, it, it's not only be, between uh, uh, between uh, like person and Hashem. It's it's also between between the spouses, right? That if just because. Uh, she she's your wife or he's your husband does not mean that it's uh, this love is going to work automatically no just because you live together you have children together it does not mean anything right so you have to work on this relationship every day of your life and the more you work uh, on this relationship the closer you become and uh, the, the 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 bigger love you have to each other right same is the uh, but but uh, Hashem has created all of this love, as we learned before, between men and women to show us, right, how a person has to, to seek God, how he has to love him, right? So that's, uh, that's for us to, to comprehend on some level. Okay? I mean, at least we, we can get a glimpse of, of this love, right, between people and uh, project it to the, uh, to the love uh, of Hashem. So the more we love, the more we work on it. So even though, as a commentary said, we have potential. Potential is very good. If you, if I have a potential, uh, I don't know, I have a car, but it's on my driveway, I don't drive it. Okay, it has great potential, but it's, uh, it's uh, just a waste of uh, money, right? With this potential. Continue. Therefore, it is necessary for, for a person to seclude himself in order to understand and conceive the wisdom and the concept that which make his creator known to him according to potential uh, which man possesses to, to understand and comprehend. As we explained in Hilchas Yisudei HaTorah. Um, so, um, so we, we're going to, to read the, that explanation, but um, person has to seclude. What, what does it mean? I, I think in the last, in the last lecture, so uh, um, he get it Hagra. I don't remember which. Altogether, there were 40 lectures. So maybe it's in uh, 28 or 29th lecture. So Rabbi Ruben Schlitter explained this concept very beautifully. Um, he explained just one second. Uh, that's what I said. So, 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 it's, it's, so to, to seclude himself, so Kazanish explained, so seclude yourself, it's, it's like in, you, you're in a desert. So when, when people ask you, come, come to the party, come to this, I, 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 I cannot. So just stay away, like because you need this time to get close to Hashem. Seclude yourself, to separate you from things that distance you yourself from Hashem. Don't watch news, don't watch TV, throw this TV out. You, know, you understand? Do like, uh, like seclude yourself, you be, you, you're in this world, but to get rid of all of the things that uh, steal your time. This valuable time that you can never restore, that you could have uh, learned Torah. Okay, that's how he explains it. Of course, it's summary, he explained it uh, very nicely. Um, continue. Okay, commentary. Hilchas Yisodei HaTorah, chapter 2, Halachas 1 and 2 states, It is a mitzvah to love and fear the glorious and awesome God. What, uh, what is the path uh, to loving him and fearing him when a person meditates on his great and wondrous deeds and, uh, and the creation and from them appreciates the, this wisdom which has no bounds or comprehension. He will immediately arose, uh, be aroused uh, to love 
to, to love and greatly desire to know God. So, so that's uh, the, the concept of it. But the dude, so people say it's Breslov and stuff. Like that. It has nothing to be Breslov. I mean, the, the Rabbi, Rabbi Nachman, it's one, one of the things that Rambam teaches this. So it was uh, known even in the Talmud, and of course before the Talmud time, Talmudic time, it was uh, it's a Jewish way to, to seclude yourself in a, in a, like a, physically, but you go somewhere, you go in a summer in a, in a forest, and it's somewhere like uh, on, on the nature, and uh, be be alone with yourself and think about all these uh, great things without all of the distraction. Put you leave your phone in a car, I guess, or at home. Don't uh, <laughs> don't uh, don't take your phone with you. Similarly, Yisadeh HaTorah 1.4.12 states, um, when, a person, when a person meditates on these matters and sees the, the wisdom of God in all the creations and works, his love for God will increase. Right? His soul will, yeah, will thirst. His soul is thirst for, for this flesh uh, and his flesh will desire to love God. So the more person Lawrence, the more he desires God. Sefer uh, Yitzira states, the end, uh, the, uh, the end are rooted in the beginning, in the beginning and the end. The Rambam begins Sefer Ham Hamadah, so this, uh, this, uh, uh, this book, the Book of Knowledge, the first of the 14 uh, books in uh, Mishnah Torah, right? And he says, the foundation of all fundamental principles and the pillar of all wisdom is to know that there is a primary entity, meaning Hashem. The end, uh, uh, the uh, and ends with our halacha. Okay, so know that there is a Hashem and uh, uh, and our halacha that you must love Him. Thus, the text uh, begins with the uh, end with knowledge of God. So how you got to get to the knowledge of God? So of course you get uh, uh, through the. Uh, how you get to the love of God through the knowledge of God. So, so we finish in the, the section. It says, "Blessed is the merciful one uh, who grants assistance." This conclusion uh, concludes the first book uh, of the book of knowledge with the help of the Almighty. The numbers of the chapters in this book forty-six, Hilchas Yisadeh Hatara ten chapters, Hilchas Dios seven chapters, Hilchas Talmud Torah seven chapters. Uh, Hilchas Avadah Kachavim, 12 chapters. Hilchas Teshuvah, 10 chapters. Commentary, last commentary. These, um, these lines were written by Rambam himself, and therefore, uh, although I made it some, uh, some printings of the Mishnah Torah, I included in our text. So that's uh, so we concluded this section. Chazak, Chazak, Bnei Chazak, and uh, so from strength to strength, and it should be one of the sections. Uh, one of the many sections that you learn together. That was Hashem. Okay, any any questions, commentary? Go ahead, any topic. <clears throat> okay, so if not, go uh, Hashem. So until uh, tomorrow, tomorrow we're going. Go ahead. Oh, could, could you could you speak a little louder? I apologize, a little louder. I cannot hear you. Yeah, if, if we if we come in to prayer in the presence of God, and yes. knowing we have a stain on our shirt, we make a transgression. Is that called an intentional sin? Uh, okay, good question. So it says, uh, I, I I see I see your question. So it says if uh, if a Talmid Chacham. Is coming to to the sh to, to to outside. Forget about prayer, right? Uh, outside of the of the street with a with a stain on his uh, jacket, whatever. Short that doesn't matter. So it's Hil Hashem. So maybe for uh, for a simple people like us, maybe it's not Hil Hashem. On one hand, on the other hand, when you walk like this on on a street and see people see that even before you come to the synagogue, yeah, yeah, so. So if people see that it could be they, they could would, uh, would think bad about all of the Jews. So in some sense it could be Hil Hashem. Even though everybody puts the stains on their shirt, and uh, I think I, as I said before I have I have several shorts just in case in my office, just in case like in my drawer. Uh, you, you never know what can happen, right? Uh, but um, 
but it would not be appropriate, of course. So, of course, uh, it's not going to be a sin that a person, a simple person, would be punished because of this. But it could be, it could be the kill Hashem. For even like people, people look for small things, right? So, especially when they don't want to do something, they they're looking for for this for small things, and uh, we say, oh, that's that's how the Jews look. Ugh. With a stain, what he he didn't have a, a new new shirt that that's like uh, old shorts like uh, look look the the color it's well all wear out Ugh. you understand so it uh, it's a bad uh, pop, uh, uh, bad outlook for the Jewish people you understand but uh, if you take uh, talking about the prayer in general it's going to be accepted the person said well, look Hashem I didn't have time if I had time uh, to 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 go home and change. Right or or pray with a minion. There is no question. You you must pray with a minion. There is no question about it. Go ahead. So is it still if it is it an, if besides the point of what type of sin is is it considered intentional? Is it actually intentional? It's a, it's not. I see, I see, I see what it, it's not like a, when, when we say intentional sin. So it's a, when the Shulchan Aruch says it is sin. So it's not, it's not, it's not a sin on that level that intentional or not intentional. You understand? Of course, as, as, as I said, it's proper to have a, like, if you travel uh, in a car like all day and stuff like that, of course, if you eat in a car, so it's, it's only a matter of time. And then at least you are a very perfect individual until you, you spill something on yourself. Like, uh, I, I know myself, so I, right. So everybody spill. So you have to have uh, two two shorts, like uh, in your car, three shorts, whatever. Some things uh, to to change. So as uh, as as we were speaking yesterday about Bora. So if you travel like uh, and, and you know you, for sure you know you're going to eat somewhere on the road, you must have a water with you in, in case you need to wash hands. Right? And maybe the, the there is a bathroom there, but it's fil filthy bathroom. Like uh, where you stop and you you don't want to use it like. There's no place to get water. Well, you understand? So you, you, you have to think a little ahead and be prepared for, for different situations. And, and know that as a Jews, we're represented on a representative of Hashem. So we cannot look like, uh, like, uh, like everybody else. So everybody else looking at us. That, that's the thing. So when a new representative, for example, if you, I don't know what is a good example, if you represent some company, uh what is the company uh what is it apple right you you represent apple so and you said that he's uh, this person representative uh, of the apple in this uh, tri-state area so that's a big uh, big position right a lot of money is going through your hand a lot of decision and uh, and then you come with a stand and show said that's wow. I, I i i thought that uh, apple who could uh, could hire somebody more more need than this person this guy so you, you understand maybe the, the the next one this guy is not going to buy apple he buy going to buy the android i don't know you understand so we are representative of hashem we have to look apart okay any other questions go ahead I, I, okay thomas did they answer your question are you clear or tell me Okay. You're welcome. Okay. Any other questions? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, Rob. Go ahead. Um, I know you talked about chicken um, maybe a couple of days ago, maybe last week, um, and you said something about the skin. Um, is it bad or is it just a preference to have the skin or eat the skin? Mm, okay, so the the skin is kosher. So if uh, if you want to eat the, the the skin, you can eat. There is no problem. Uh, but uh, the thing is, but uh, if if it's known that there is a lot of cholesterol in the skin, so you know it's not healthy. If uh, maybe if uh, somebody is a younger person with a good metabolism, there is no problem. But if you if uh, so if you know that uh, it can endanger your health, so it's not recommended. Is it not allowed? No, it's allowed. It's uh, one of the things that is not recommended. 
Yeah, I understand because uh, it's statistics show that uh, uh, that many people die from uh, heart attacks and these heart attacks, more most of them, caused by high cholesterol. So and 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 to, to in order to have a high cholesterol, you you don't have to be a beast. You don't have to be like a three hundred pounds. Not even uh, like uh, normal uh, people have a high cholesterol because they eat all of the not healthy food. So uh, like a deep fry. <laughs> so why would somebody be de deprived? It's uh, such a bad for you. Understand? So we have to take uh, care of our health and um, and and be responsible because this body is something that Hashem gave us as a loan, right? See, he had to give us nishama, only our soul. But uh, there is a there is only a special container. Second, let me know this. So and but but the. The only way to, to hold the soul here in this world is in the body. So this body is a loner. So you cannot do with this body whatever you want. Right? And uh, as, as we said before, so if person is sick, with whatever sickness, with heart problem, a different problem, right? So he cannot serve uh, Hashem properly. So with this abusing of the our body, so we, in some sense, we're going against Hashem. Why? Because we cannot learn. So, okay, the person said, okay, I'm very sleepy, I have no energy. Okay, you have no energy because you eat all of this garbage food, right, that uh, <laughs> that uh, all, all of these doctors told you not, not to do. Okay, so then it drains your energy. So, okay. So, who, whose fault is it that you, you fall asleep? You start reading the page and uh, you fall asleep after half a page. So, you have no idea about uh, weekly parasha. Why? Because you ate uh, bad food, you understand? So, is it not allowed? No, it's, it is allowed. Is it recommended? It's not recommended. Understand? Especially today, but we you know the facts. The facts, are, so we go by many many things. We go by by science. I mean, if they say it's bad, so it's bad. I mean, I'm not going to argue with them. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so if no questions, so we stop here. And Bezos Hashem, so uh, we'll see what, what are we going to learn next. I think uh, we have to learn uh, Hilchas Talmud Torah, laws of uh, uh, studying Torah, and you, you will be surprised unless, unless you learn it once. On your own, you will be surprised at all the topics that we're going to. Un unexpected, I would say, unexpected topics that we're going to cover in that uh, in that section. Bezras Hashem. Okay, so tomorrow we're going to do halachas of brachas, laws of blessings. Very interesting class. So please join us tomorrow. Good night.